Today, we're diving into a subject that sparks plenty of curiosity, some anxiety, and sadly, a good amount of misinformation. What exactly is considered a normal penis size? And even more importantly, how do you properly measure it in both length and girth? With the increase in male cosmetic enhancements and the flood of unrealistic images online, this question now pops up constantly in medical clinics, online communities, and across social media. But before we get any deeper, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, because this is information every man should know. Now, I want to ease your mind with something that might actually surprise you. About 95% of men who stress about their penis size are actually well within the medically normal range. Yes, you heard that correctly. In most cases, this isn't a physical problem. It's a distorted self-image. Many men think their size is inadequate, mostly because they compare themselves to unrealistic depictions, especially those seen in adult films or on the internet, where images are often exaggerated or digitally altered. Here's another interesting point. This worry is far more common among men than women. While around 50% of men report feeling anxious or dissatisfied about their penis size, only about 5-10% to of women say it's a very important factor in choosing a partner. So, take a deep breath. My goal today is to educate, inform and, most importantly, help put your mind at ease. In this video, I'll present real scientific data. I'll teach you how to accurately measure both length and girth. I'll explain what enhancement procedures exist, along with their risks. And we'll even explore a fascinating historical fact that just might change how you view this whole topic. Let's begin by understanding how penis size should actually be measured. Now, let's cover how penis size is measured correctly, because this part is key to knowing what's considered normal. There are two main aspects to consider, length and girth which refers to the thickness or circumference of the shaft. How to measure length. Penis length can be measured either when erect or when flaccid and stretched. Both methods are used in scientific research. However, the most reliable method clinically is the flaccid stretched length, which closely corresponds to erect length. Here's how to do it accurately. Use a ruler or measuring tape. Place it at the pubic bone, right where the penis meets your body. You may need to gently press into the fat pad to reach the bone. Stretch the penis outward, not forcefully but firmly, while flaccid, and measure up to the tip of the glands or the head. The same method applies when erect. Start at the pubic bone and measure up to the tip, keeping the ruler on top, aligned with the shaft. Avoid measuring from the skin or underneath. That adds extra length and results in inaccurate numbers. How to measure girth circumference. Girth matters just as much as length and can vary widely among individuals. Here's how to measure girth. Take a soft measuring tape or even a piece of string. Wrap it around the middle part of the shaft, not too close to the base or the tip. Note the measurement where the ends meet. One of today's more common cosmetic procedures focuses on increasing girth and the most widely discussed method involves injecting hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a substance that naturally occurs in the body and it's also commonly used in facial fillers. When injected into the shaft of the penis, it can temporarily increase girth by 2 to 3 centimeters. This effect typically lasts 12 to 18 months depending on the product used, and the individual's metabolism. It's considered safer than many other materials and is gradually absorbed by the body over time. However, not all injectable materials are safe. Some clinics promote non-absorbable fillers, such as PMMA or polymethyl methacrylate, or even industrial-grade silicone. These substances can cause serious complications, including chronic inflammation, hard lumps or nodules, deformities and irreversible tissue damage. For these reasons, reputable medical organisations do not recommend using these non-absorbable substances. Lengthening procedures. 
When it comes to increasing length, the available options are much more limited and generally riskier. Two procedures sometimes offered include 1. Liposuction of the pubic area. This removes fat from around the base of the penis, making more of the shaft visible. It does not increase the actual length, but can improve appearance. 2. Suspensory ligament release. This surgical procedure cuts the ligament that holds the penis close to the pubic bone. It can add 2 to 2.5 centimeters of visible length when flaccid, but does not increase erect length. This procedure may also cause instability during intercourse and carries risks of complications and scar tissue. Importantly, there are currently no permanent medically approved methods for true penile lengthening that are endorsed by Brazil's Federal Council of Medicine or most other major international medical bodies. A note on penile implants. Finally, it's important to clarify that penile implants, which you may see mentioned online, are not designed for size enhancement. They are medical devices used to treat erectile dysfunction and are recommended only in specific medical cases. Final thoughts. A historical perspective. As we wrap up, I'd like to leave you with a fascinating piece of history. One that might shift how you think about this topic. In ancient Greek culture, the ideal male body was actually portrayed with a smaller penis. This was viewed as a symbol of wisdom, self-control and rational thinking. In contrast, large penises were often linked with barbarism, lack of discipline or used for comedic exaggeration. Just look at sculptures of Greek gods and philosophers. You won't find oversized anatomy. When large penises did appear in ancient art, they were often part of caricatures or depicted in mythological figures like Priapus a fertility god shown with grotesquely exaggerated features. Why does this matter? Because it reminds us that cultural ideas around masculinity and size are fluid and ever-changing. What's considered ideal in one era may be seen very differently in another. Much of the anxiety people experience today stems more from social pressures than any biological reality. So if you've ever felt insecure or pressured by what you've seen in media, online, or even in locker room conversations, you are not alone. But hopefully, this video has helped give you a better perspective. At the end of the day, penis size does not define your worth, nor your ability to please a partner or your masculinity. What truly matters is your confidence, respect for others, and your physical and emotional health. If you found this content helpful, please take a moment to share your thoughts in the comments section. Reading your comments brings us encouragement and joy. And don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss more science-based, judgment-free content like this. Thank you so much for watching.